All right, so what I want to do in this next video is we want to put kind of a lot of the topics that we've talked about throughout the day today together to get uh, a somewhat better map or a better understanding of where violent crimes are occurring inside Chicago. All right, so um, I know we already subset the data once. Um, I'm going to do it again, like I said, just to limit the amount of information that I'm trying to, to process at once here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to create a new data frame uh, and I'm going to use the murder data that we already had and I'll just take the first 100 rows. And the columns that I want are the longitude column and then the latitude column. So just a small data set of murders First 100 rows, uh, longitude and latitude. It's the only information that I really need. All right. And so um, we want to take this and we want to plot it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a map. All right. And we know this is uh, information that's coming out of Chicago. So I'm going to assume a Chicago map is going to be sufficient for us. So we'll go get map and we'll just Google Chicago. We'll go to zoom level 10. And we'll do it on a satellite. All right, so we run that. We go out and we grab the GG map object. And now we've got a, a data set and a map. And so what we can do is we can feed that into GG map and we can actually get an overlay of these first 100 murders that occurred in Chicago. Um, and I'm going to put this argument extent equals normal. So there's a couple of different uh, arguments that you can give the GG map function with respect to the extent. You can also declare where you want the uh, legend to show up on the map. Uh, and there's a couple of other options that I described in the documentation for today's lesson. So you can take a look at that. Um, some of the extents will give you the, the actual lat longs on the, on the border of the plot. Some of them will not. Um, let's just go with extent equals normal for now. All right. And so we've got, uh, we got a map of Chicago. We got a data set. So we've called GG map to take that map and display it. Now what we need to do is we need to add points onto that base layer to show where crime is occurring. And so we do it the exact same way that we would have done it with GG plot. We just add a layer. So we go geom and we can do point for a scatter plot in this case. And then we need to assign our aesthetics. So we're going to go X is equal to longitude. Y is equal to latitude. The data set that we're using is that new data, new data frame that I created. And then uh, I'll just color them red for now so that they show up really well on our satellite image. And so when I run that, um, it's going to go out, um, grab the maps that we uh, had, and then it's going to overlay those into a ggmap object and then plot the points for murders on top of that. And so uh, maybe satellite was not the best way to go in this case, but now we can see sort of a visual of uh, crime in Chicago. All right, and that's that's as easy as it as it is. Um, like I said, we're just using a lot of the same fundamentals that we learned during the ggplot portion of the course. All right. But let's um let's actually take a look at this thing, uh, kind of GG map in action, by playing around with uh, some more crime in Chicago. All right. So um, and actually, so one thing that I would mention, you could create something that's very similar to this last plot using GG plot. You don't actually even have to use GG map, but GG map tends to be a lot more intuitive than GG plot does. You can see the, a technique for doing that again in the documentation for today. So if you're interested, you can take a look there. All right, so uh, I want a little more data than the um, than just the murder map. And so I'm going to subset the Chicago data set again. Uh, and this time, I'm going to get three different offenses. So the first is going to be homicide. So we'll keep all the murders in there. And then um, I also want to get assaults and sexual assaults. All right, so we're going to do um, 
assault is just assault. And then uh, sexual assault is actually called crim sexual assault. So it's, uh, let's see, offense equals, all right, crim sexual all caps assault. So just subsetting the data set a little bit there. And let me write this so you guys can see it. All right. So now when I do that, I've got a data set called violent and it's 22,561 observations. This is because I'm going to ultimately do a density plot on this. And so I just need a little more information, understanding that it may take a little longer to go out and um, to plot all of this stuff, to handle all that information. All right. Um, for me, uh, I like to define the levels of my uh, factors. So I've got um, these three offenses. And so what I'm going to do is uh, declare them as factors and then uh, define the levels. So mine as such. Go you know, homicide first, and then criminal sexual assault, and then assault. This is probably not critical to what we're doing, but whatever. Order these things. All right, and so um, the next thing, and this is like this is probably the clunkiest area of um, working with ggmap is like you want to like I want to restrict my violent crimes to just the downtown area of Chicago, um, and so the way that the way that I have to do it is basically through a subset function again. And uh, I'm going to copy this from the notes. So we're, we're taking the violent data. Um, and then I'm going to restrict it to the following latitudes and longitudes. All right. So it's uh, latitude has to be between negative 87.64 degrees and 87 point negative 87.604445. And then the same thing with latitude. And like I said, like uh, this is, it's a really clunky way to do it. I wish there was a way that you could almost like define a point on the ground and then just get everything around it. But I haven't, I haven't discovered uh, how you might do that. And so this is the way that I restrict my violent map to just the downtown area. So I'm going to run just these, these latitudes and longitudes. Uh, and we can see that we're left with about 1200 observations. All right, there's also there's a function called GG locator that's supposed to allow you to create a map, basically like draw on the map the area that you want to include in your uh, overlay. But I, I haven't got it to work it. And I, I don't know what I don't know exactly how you're supposed to do it. And for some reason, just on my computer, it will, I can't get it to work. So it's out there. Um, but uh, I'm not smart enough for it. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got left. Um, so we got X and Y coordinates, which again, well, let's go to the top here. So the case number, the date that it occurred and the time, block the IUCR, which again, I don't know what that is, um, the offense, uh, the secondary offense, and then a couple of location variables, whether or not they got arrested or an arrest was made, the FBI code, and then the X coordinate, Y coordinate, Latitude, longitude is the one we're going to use. And then location, like I said before, that's just latitude, longitude combined. All right. So um, we want to plot this thing. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to set a theme to black and white first. So we'll go uh, theme set. And rather than add this as a layer like I did before, um, I'm just going to set it for throughout the duration of uh, this lesson. All right, and the 16 in there, that's just the beginner font size. The default is 11, so I'm making my font a little bit larger. 
All right, now what I could do now is go out, grab a map, and then start my GG map. Um, and uh, because QMap replaces the get map GG map function, I can just use QMap as a um, function to replace both of those. All right, so I'm going to start by saying, all right, here's my analysis. And I'm going to go QMap, and of course, we're working with Chicago, so that's going to be the area that we search. The zoom level will do 14. Um, the color I'm going to set to black and white and legend. Like I said before, there's some um, other arguments that I haven't really discussed, but are in the notes. We're going to put the legend at the bottom. All right. So what is the result of uh, or what is actually stored in this object called analysis? Well, it's a map of Chicago that's in black and white with a 14 level zoom and a legend at the bottom. All right. And if you wanted to, you could take a look at uh, analysis and observe all the metadata. Um, the map itself will look like this, right? So black and white of Chicago, the downtown area. All right, so now I'm going to take that and we're just going to start feeding layers to it. So we start out with analysis. And because I'm doing another layer, I add the plus sign and then we want to do geom point. So we need to define the aesthetics. We'll say X is equal to longitude and Y is equal to latitude. And our color is going to be tied to, actually, let's do this inside the aesthetic uh, mapping. So we'll say color is tied to the offense. So our murders show up differently than the, than the sexual assaults and assaults. And then uh, we need to find the data set because all we have right now is a map. So a little bit different than what we did in ggplot. Uh, we got to make sure that we put the data in the geom point layer in this case. So we're going to use that violent map. And the size of the points we'll say are equal to two. So make them a little bit larger. Actually, let's do it like this. All right, so started out with our base map analysis. And that's just a map of downtown Chicago. And then now we're adding points based on uh, this subset of our original data. And all we specify is X is equal to longitude, Y is equal to latitude, color the points according to the actual offense. All right. So uh, we've got some missing values. We got a little warning message there, but when I blow this up, and this is where the, the black and white background is nice to have is so it doesn't detract from what we're actually looking at. We get to see uh, all of the violent crimes that occurred in the downtown area of Chicago in 2018. Now, um, assault, you can see there's a lot of those. Homicides, there's got to be more than just the three that I can sort of make out here, right? And then you've got a smattering of uh, criminal sexual assault. So what's like what's happening in this case is we've got a lot of overplot, uh, unfortunately. And so um, a lot of the homicides that are happening are actually getting covered up by some of the other crimes um, for a couple of reasons. One, either they occurred, you know, right exactly at the same spot or uh, if there was a report of like a homicide, the police officer may have like just written down like, hey, it was on the, you know, it's close to the intersection of Main and Water Street or whatever. And so um, that intersection actually gets the uh, location, right? And if they do that over and over again, then you have a bunch of plots that are actually on top of each other on the exact same location. All right. Now, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can deal with this. There's the geom jitter, which will sort of add some variation to each of the um, points, but I'm going to use something a little bit different. So what we're going to do is basically a, a two-dimensional histogram um, where we divide up not only the x-axis, but the y-axis as well into um, sort of swaths. So imagine like drawing lines up and down on our map and then left and right, east and west, and then inside each of those boxes, we're going to count the number of offenses, right? The same way that we would with a two dimensional or with a one dimensional histogram, but now we're going to do it with a two dimensional histogram. All right. Now there's two functions that we can use to do it. And remember, I talked about stats 
when we looked at ggplot stats and geom layers are essentially interchangeable. So the two functions that we could use to create this two-dimensional histogram is either uh, geom bin 2D or geom, or I'm sorry, stat bin 2D. And remember the difference between the geom layers and the stat layers is that uh, calling the stat layer will give you a little more control over some of the calculated values. All right, and in this case, um, I want to make use of, uh, actually, we're not going to make use of it yet, but whatever. Um, so in this case, we could use either one, um, and I'm actually not going to make use of the calculated value, so it doesn't really matter which one we use. So let's do, let's just do the geom bin 2D, because that's the one that people are more familiar with, I think. So uh, we will start with analysis. And again, like all we're doing is trying to like better display the results of this plot in a way that we don't have so much overfitting, right? Or overplotting, I guess, is a better term to use. So we'll go geom uh, underscore uh, bin 2D. And then our aesthetics are going to be the same thing as they had as we had before. So X is equal to the longitude, Y is equal to the latitude. The color is equal to a fence. And uh, I'm going to say fill is equal to a, a fence as well. So not only the like outside of the resulting square, but the inside is uh, colored according to the offense. And um, for the size, we'll restrict it down to 0 0.2. So the bins, this is an important one. This defines how many uh, lines running east, west, east, west, north, and south break up the space, right? And so you give it to it as a vector of two numbers. So let's say uh, 20 lines going north, south, 20 lines going east, west. as just like a start point, all right? And I'm also going to add some transparency on this by uh, stating alpha is equal to 0.5. And then finally, because we haven't even done it yet, we needed to find the data source. And the data, again, is, is uh, the violent map subset that we created. All right, so it's showing me a little error here, so I must have missed something. Hold on, let me make sure I got everything. All right, so let's try to run that and see what it gives us. All right, so if I zoom in on this map, you can see that it's broken up into squares, 20 uh, moving downward, 20 left and right. And for each of the squares, it, uh, it essentially adds up or it counts the number of homicides, criminal sexual assault, and assault. And in this case, if there is one, it, just, it colors that square uh, in that, in that uh, offense shade, right? Um, and because there's a little bit of transparency associated here, you can sort of see when there's both an assault and a homicide plotted on top of each other, or an assault and uh, a criminal sexual assault, or in this case, up here, all three are plotted on top of each other, right? Now, like this, this sort of helps to give you, um, I think, a little more information. I don't, I don't know that a lot of people would really like this plot, um, but it still doesn't show you like it doesn't show you the, the essentially the magnitude of the crime that are that is occurring in a certain area, right? Because all it does is I had to look at the actual documentation for actually how it like plots this, but my guess is that it says if there's if this crime occurs in this area, like color it that shade of uh, offense, right? Um, so it doesn't quite fill the bill for what I think we're looking for. So we need something else um, that's a little more advanced, hopefully, to try and give us a better idea of, of uh, what we're looking at as far as crime. So um, there's these two density functions. One's the geom density 2D, and then you have the stat density 2D. And in this case, um, like I said before, they can be used interchangeably, but in this case, I want to use the stat because I'm going to use uh, some of the calculated values in my plot, right, as aesthetics. So I'll start out with analysis, and what we're trying to do is create a density plot. 
So we're going to go stat density 2D. Oops. So that's stat underscore density 2D. And then uh, the, the, uh, the initial aesthetics that we give it for the X and the Y are going to be the same thing. So X is equal to longitude, uh, Y is equal to latitude. And then uh, here's where we're going to actually make use of the calculated stats. So um, if you take a look at the cheat sheet on the back, and you scroll down in the first column to stat density 2D, you can see that um, it'll take the aesthetics X, Y, color, and size, and then the calculated value is dot, dot, level, dot, dot. So we're going to say fill is equal to level or dot, dot, level, dot, dot. And then alpha is equal to dot, dot, level, dot, dot. And then I'm just going to add a couple of tweaks onto the plot itself. Uh, you can play around with different sizes and different bins if you would like and see what that does for you. Make sure that you put your data in there, of course. I always forget this because uh, I'm used to working in GG plot. Um, and then the last thing, because we're using a stat, so we could let our guess on what uh, geom layer we want, but I'm going to specify, let's use geom polygon. All right, and let's see what this thing looks like. It should be like a heat map of crime activity in downtown Chicago. All right, so if I zoom in on this, um, so you sort of get a sense of where crimes are occurring. So um, the level of crime, and this is based on the, the kernel density calculation, so I'd have to dig in to find out exactly how that's uh, working. The, the darker it is, so the more gray it is in terms of the transparency, or the more, I guess, opaque it is, in terms of the transparency, that's a higher level of crime. And then the lighter blue it is, that's also uh, more crime activity. So you can see there's like a hot spot right in the middle here. It seems to be like a little hot spot there. And then there's a couple of like smaller hot spots around it. All right. So uh, this could serve as kind of the starting point for your analysis. Um, and again, like, I don't know that this thing is ready for prime time. I don't know if I'm ready to show this thing to the boss. But uh, similar analysis analyses as this have been done in other cities, and in particular in Houston, they've done a lot of work on trying to figure out like why crimes occur in a certain area. And what they came up with, so in Houston, when they did a similar overlay, they had three areas of uh, significant activity. The first was uh, the, the, like the vicinity of the county jail, which released its inmates twice a day. And they would like sort of hang out in the area and eventually get in trouble again. Um, the second was a commercial bus station. And it was also an area of significant um, homelessness. So a lot of uh, people sort of, uh, what do they call that? Lingering, I guess, around the area. And then the very last one was um, a very walkable part of town. So there was a lot of like foot traffic, but also was like the red light district of Houston. So um, prostitution going on and stuff like that, and it, that tended to be uh, sort of the catalyst for a lot of crime. All right, so you could take a look at, you know, whatever it is that you're analyzing, like take a look at what areas seem to be um, seeing the most activity and then try to figure out, okay, why is that maybe? All right. Now for us, um, there's another level of analysis that we can add onto this plot. And that is, um, you may take a look at this and go like, well, I see what happens in a given year, but surely like that's not a good snapshot of what's happening every single day of the year. Right. So you can start to break it down by maybe like what goes on in the summer versus what goes on in the winter. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is take a look at crime based on day of the week. And so um, what I want to do first is generate uh, a new variable for day of the week in my data set. And then I'm going to use this idea of faceting to get a plot for each day of the week so I can compare, you know, what happens on Saturday night to what goes on on Tuesday morning, right? Or actually just all day Tuesday. 
All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, create this new variable. So I'm going to go violent map day and um, I always like I'm always in the habit of uh, transferring, especially when I'm working with factors, variables back to a character. So I don't I don't know, I just it tends to give me problems if I don't do that. So I'm first going to uh, make date occur. I think that's what it's called. Yep, the date occur variable in my data set, I'm going to turn into a character. All right, and then I'm going to say, uh, so violent map. Let me make sure that works. I have a space in there that. No, it didn't. Hold on. I think the space is screwing me up. Oh, whoops. This should be violent map. All right. So now I should have day in there, and I do. Okay. And it's stored as a character. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to take um, that day variable and create day two, which is just going to be the day of the week. So we'll do violent map dollar sign day two. And then I'll say as uh, that factor format. And then we're going to, we have to do the as dot date, or in this case, we'll do POSIX CT. Then I'm going to take uh, that day variable. I need to specify the format. So we'll say format is equal to, let me move this thing over. Okay, so it's it looks like it's uh, month, day with forward slashes in between, and then a four-digit year space, and then hour colon minute colon second. So our format should be uh, percent m forward slash percent d forward slash percent capital Y for the four-digit year space percent h colon percent capital M colon percent capital S space and then percent P for AM PM. All right. And then what I want to do is I want to. Um, I, the only thing I really want to keep the only thing I'm interested in is the actual day of the week. So I'm going to say that's why I have the as dot factor call here because it allows me to specify the resulting format. So I could say format equal to uh, percent uppercase A will give me the day of the week. All right, so let's see. I've got two parentheses here. That doesn't make any sense. All right. So that looks like it should work. So let's run it. Could not find as dot factor. So let's see. That should be a lowercase f. Do not know how to convert violent day. Should be violent map. That should work. So let's see, let's go down and take a look at that variable. So if I did table uh, violent map, to should get each day of the week and have observations for each of those days and I do okay good so now I'm going to facet based on uh, that new discrete variable all right so we're going to start with our original analysis and basically it's going to be this same plot that I had up here so I'm just going to copy that all right um and then let's go ahead just for fun let's put a couple other layers on here so let's change so right now our fill is this blue color 
So let's change that to something else. So we're going to add a scale. So go scale, fill, underscore, uh, and we'll use the gradient as opposed to gradient N. And that just that just means that you need to give a low value and a high, a low color and a high color. So we'll do low equal to black and high because we're working in Chicago and I'm watching the last dance right now. So we'll do bulls colors. So low is equal to black, high is equal to red. And then we'll add another layer for our faceting. So we could do either facet wrap or facet grid. Uh, I'll make it easy and just do facet wrap. The formula we're going to go uh, using the variable day two. So I'll do the tilde sign day two. And we will see if this works. So let's do it. Boom. Like I said, working with mapping data sometimes takes a while to get everything to come up. It looks like it's coming up. So let me zoom in on it. And blow this thing up a little bit. All right, so what we have is crime by day of the week. So it looks like Thursday is your big winner for downtown Chicago. That's the day to stay out of there. Um, and then I sort of look around here and try to find things that are different about each day. So um, it looks like Saturday is where crime occurs over here in the West, Saturday and Tuesday. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, you've got kind of a hot spot Thursday over here too. So I don't know. You take a look at this and you try to figure out, okay, why uh, why is crime occurring on these days in these locations? And then you try to explain that, right? And there's a bunch of other things that you would probably do before you want to use this visualization and show it to somebody. Like probably want to put more descriptive uh, stuff down here. Make sure that your legend is not just bled together using a theme. Um, but this would be like your starting point. All right, so there you go. There's an example of uh, using ggmap, taking a look at uh, some data, trying to draw some conclusions, uh, maybe not being super successful in doing so, but hopefully you guys have a good idea of how you can use um, ggmap in your analysis. All right, so um, there's also a couple of helper functions that go along with ggmap. And I'm going to end this video here and we'll pick up with those helper functions after this, but that allows you just to like convert between lat long and, and locations, for example, which is a really helpful feature to have, um, at least in my mind. All right, so we'll pick back up with those utility functions. Thanks.